Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to do pagination with a MongoDB database and some kind of API. So basically, uh, instead of returning all the results at once for a certain collection in your API, you'll be able to return uh, a, a group of things in that collection and then you'll get URLs to get the next group. So let's say you have 100 items in your collection, you can return 10 at a time, and then you'll get a URL to get the next 10, and then another URL to get the 10 after that when you go to the next URL. It will make sense once I show you how to use it. But before I get into that, I just wanna tell everyone that I have this Flask cheat sheet. Um, if you Find yourself looking at the documents from time to time. I think this would be great for you because it gives you some of the most common uh, cases in Flask. So to get that, just click the link down in the description below. So for this video, I'll show you how to create this API with pagination. And I already have an example up. Uh, I created a collection in MongoLab. So I have this MongoDB set up. And it's basically just a list of numbers, 1 through 70. And then I have this API call that I'll be creating in this video. And basically it gives me all the numbers um, given a limit and an offset. So right now the offset is five. So it uh, starts at number six and the limit is five. So it gives me five results. If I change the limit to say 10 and I use the same offset, I get six through 15. So I get 10 items and the offset is 15. And if I change the offset to say 10, then it gives me 11 through 20. And if I use this uh, next URL here that is returned, it will give me the next set. So this one goes up to 20. So I will get 21 through 30 with this one, which is what I have here. So uh, pretty simple stuff, but this is very useful in an API when you have a lot of results that you wanna return and you need a way for the consumer of the API to get all of this data if they want it or just a particular subset of the data. So let's get started creating this API. I have to import a few things from Flask, um, Flask request and Justonify. And then from PyMongo, I'm importing both the PyMongo class and just PyMongo so I can get the constants in PyMongo. I'll need ascending and descending. And then everything else is pretty normal. Um, I'm connecting to my database here, initializing it here. And then I have this empty route that I'll be creating the API on. So the first thing you need to know when creating something like this is object IDs, how they are created. So object IDs are typically, well, not typically, they're always going to be increasing. So if I insert data right now, I'll get a certain object ID. And here's one of the object IDs. And if I insert data three years from now, I'm going to get a different object ID. And the object ID that I got from today will be lower in a sense in terms of ordering than the object ID that I get three years from now when I insert. So this will be very important um, in this demonstration. So I just want to let you all know that, that the object IDs are increasing because they're, they start with the timestamp and then from there they do other things that uh, generate an object ID in a, in a way that it's always increasing. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to simply return the data from my API or return the data from the collection. I'm not gonna worry about um, limiting it and offsetting it yet. I'm going to just start with um, returning data from the collection. So the first thing I'll need to do is I'll need to collect uh, connect to the collection. So I called it numbers and it's mongo.db numbers in Python. And then what I'm going to do is simply find everything in that collection. So numbers.find, uh, it's empty because I'm finding everything. And I wanna sort by ID. So pymongo.ascending. This is the default, but I'm just putting it here for clarity purposes. And then I'm not going to limit by anything. And then I'll create this output array. And I'll say for I in, um, I forgot to give this a value. So I'll say um, numbers 
is the cursor that gets returned by this query here. So for i in numbers, what I want to do is just add the results into this output list. So output dot append and let's do number and then i number. And then I'll return the justified version of it. So return justify result output previous URL. I'll leave it blank for now, but I'll need that later. And next URL, I'll leave it blank for now, but we're going to use it later. So I'll save this and I'll run it just to make sure everything's working. Python pagination. Okay, it's running. So this is my old one. I'll get rid of the uh, limit and offset because I don't have that ability yet. So global name number is not defined. Uh, let's see where I messed up. Global name number there. That should have been just number, not numbers. Next URL is not defined. Let's see where I messed up there. Oh, it should have quotes around it. Okay. So two minor issues. Okay, so now I have this list of numbers and it has every single number that I have in the collection. Like I said, it was one through 70, so I get all 70 results here. So now what I wanna do is I want to kind of limit them. I, I don't wanna get all 70 at once. I want to limit it to what the user passes in. So to do this, uh, before accepting user input, just to make it easy, I'll have a variable here and I'll say 10. So this will be user input eventually uh, from the API, but uh, just to start, I'll have the limit as 10. So when I run the query, all I have to do is change one thing, limit to limit. So this limit is going to uh, restrict the number of results from this query. So let's run this and I should get just 10. So yes, I have one through 10 now instead of one through 70. So that was the easy part and that's pretty easy to figure out. But now how do you do this pagination stuff? How do you start from an arbitrary number? So if I wanted to start from number 20, how could I do that instead of always starting from one? Well, that's what this video is about. So to start, I'll create another variable for now that will be user input eventually, but um, it will start off as this hard coded value. So I'll say offset is 20. So I want to start with the number 21. So the very first thing I need to do is I need to find the ID of the 20th element in the collection, because I'm going to use that ID to start my query uh, to return all the results. So to do this, I'll create another query. I'll say uh, starting ID. I'll call the cursor starting ID. And it's going to be numbers.find. I want to sort by ID. And it's going to be pymongo.ascending. So right now, this query looks a lot like the query below it, but the reason why I'm doing this here is because I'm going to modify this query a little bit. So numbers I'll find sort ID pong, pi mongo ascending. And then I want to get the last ID or this should be starting ID. And I'll create a variable called last ID and it will be starting ID. And then my offset and then the value that I'm getting is the ID. So I'm using offset here, which is this uh, variable up here. So 20. So what it's doing is it's finding all of the um, numbers that I have. And then it's getting the 20th element, which will be the number 20, right? No, it would be 21 that it gets uh, because it starts from one. So one plus 20 is 21. It will get the 21st element and it will get that ID. So the last ID will be this. And I feel like I didn't explain that too clearly, but we'll see what happens in just a moment. 
So with this last ID, I'm now going to modify this query below it to start from that last ID. So in this find, I will now find a certain ID. And what I want is I want to find all the IDs that are greater than or equal to the last ID. So if this is the 21st number, which is the 20th element, then it will start with the 21st number and then it will do the rest of the query. So I have the 21st number here and then it will limit by 10. So I should get 21 through 30. So I'll save that and I'll run this here and local variable numbers reference before assignment. So I have another little bug in here. Let's see. Oops. This is just number. I'll save that and I'll run it again. Okay. So now I have 21 through 30. So let me just change the offset to 30 and I'll change the limit to five. So I should get 31 through 35 now. And that's exactly what I get. So that's basically pagination for you. I'm hard coding the values, but that is basic pagination. So now let me change the hard coded values to be uh, actual inputs. So this is really easy to do. I'm going to have them be query parameters. So I just need to get request.args of lim of offset for offset. And then for the limit, it's similar request.args limit. And now with these two, uh, I can pass in anything that I want. So I'll save that and I'll do, uh, let's say limit equals eight and offset equals 16. So when I do that, I get 17 through 24. So the last thing that I have to do is create these next URLs and previous URLs. And this is really easy to do. Uh, I'm going to take a little shortcut when doing this. I'm going to cheat a little bit, but um, you should be able to figure out the rest of it. So I need two variables, next URL and previous URL. So there are many ways you can do this. I'm just going to kind of write the values in here. Typically, you'd want something a little more dynamic, but it's up to you. This is just for demonstration purposes, so these videos don't get too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just write in the route. So numbers and then limit is going to equal something. And this is actually going to be the same for down here. So the limit will always be the same. So if they're requesting the first page, the limit with a limit of say 10, the, the next page is always going to have the same limit. So stir limit is going to be added to that URL. And then I need the offset. So ampersand offset equals. And then all I have to do here is stir offset plus limit. And this gets me the next page. And as you can imagine, to get the previous page, I'll do something very similar. So and offset equals stir offset minus limit. So that gets me the previous page. So I'll save this and I'll run it again. And now I should have the next in the previous URLs populated. And there they are. So uh, I have 17, 17 through 24 here. If I go to the next URL, I'll just take this and copy it up here. I should now get a number starting with 25. So I get 25 through 32. If I take this, copy it, I get 33 through 40 and so on. And if I want to go backwards, uh, I just do the same thing. So pretty easy stuff. And now one thing I want to show you is kind of reversing the order to do this. You want to just switch a few things around. So you see these two ascendings. If you want to go backwards. So if you want to start from 70 and then go from 70 all the way down to one, you would just change these two to descending. So descending, descending, and then instead of greater than or equal to, it's going to be less than or equal to.
So basically, it's the same process that I just did, but everything's in reverse because um, you're now sorting by the IDs, but they're in reverse order. So you need to find an ID that is less than the last ID that you're interested in. So if I do this, and let's say limit five offset 10, I get 60 through 56. And then let's do the next URL. I get 55 through 51 and so on, 50 through 46. So creating an API with pagination isn't too bad. Um, there are other ways to do it, of course, just like many other things in programming. There are many different ways to do the same thing. Um, you could change this way of finding the starting ID to use um, a passed in ID. So you can always supply the ID in the next or previous URL. That way you save on this query. So if you have a lot of data in your collection, you could save one query by just uh, passing the ID around. And then you take that ID and just run this one query down here. And then of course, you're going to have the uh, limit and offset be JSON input instead of uh, query parameters. Or you can have them be passed in the endpoint itself. Whatever you want, it all works. Um, another thing you can do is you can use skip um, in the query down here, which is another way of doing it. But I just want to show you the way that I would do it. And one more thing, I didn't put checking on these um, pass in parameters. So you may get a negative number here for the offset. You may get an offset that is uh, greater than what your database can handle. But I'll leave that as an exercise to you to do the basic uh, limit checking. Um, a hint would be to use a zero as a floor and as a ceiling. So um, an offset can't be bigger than the count of uh, the numbers. So here, starting ID, you would find the count and just make sure that the offset doesn't go above that. But you can do that on your own. So that's it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions about creating an API with pagination using Flask and PyMongo, just leave me a message down below. Um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video, and I will talk to you next time.